Ms. Williamson, what's your response on the Flint water crisis? My response on the Flint water crisis is that Flint is just the tip of the iceberg. I was recently in Denmark, South Carolina, where it is, there is a lot of talk about it being the next Flint. We have communities, particularly communities of color and disadvantaged communities all over this country who are suffering from environmental injustice. I assure you, I lived in Gross Point. What happened in Flint would not have happened in Gross Point. This is part of the dark underbelly of American society. The racism, the bigotry. Whoa, easy there. She jumped from water problems to racism and bigotry. How did that happen? How did she make that leap? She says she's for love, but she doesn't mind crying wolf on racism. You know, just because a black community suffers in some way, that doesn't necessarily mean that racism was the cause. Perhaps there was a different cause. I mean, it's very irresponsible. I've never even heard anybody accuse the people responsible for racism. This is the first time I've ever heard that. I'll just briefly give the outline for anybody who doesn't know. The people of Flint were getting their water from Lake Huron. The governor of Michigan decided that it was too expensive, so he wanted to switch from getting the water from Lake Huron to the Flint River. And the problem with that was the water in the Flint River was very corrosive, so when it went through the lead pipes, the lead wore off into the water. So when the people got their water, not only was it corrosive, but also it had a lot of lead in it. So obviously you don't want to be drinking that. And we all saw the pictures of brown water. <laughs> that's disgusting and that shouldn't have happened. And to me, the moral of that story is government incompetence. It would be much better if we could have water companies competing because if that happened in the free market with multiple water companies competing for your business, you call up the water company and say, I quit, I'm canceling my service and I'm going to the next provider. But it took years for them to fix this problem. And, and some people say it's not even fixed yet. But how can you have different water companies competing when you have pipes in the ground? What are you gonna have, two sets of pipes in the ground? I mean, that's kind of unfeasible. So unfortunately, this is a situation where you probably have to have government do this. Um, this is the kind of thing that happens. So it's government incompetence, and she's right to call it out, but for her to blame it on racism, I think that's ridiculous. There's no evidence for that. And if you care about real racism, then don't cry wolf. Wait until there's a real example of racism. If you want to help something, talk about the problem, talk about solutions for the problem. Don't make naked claims of racism based on nothing. So she plays very fast and loose with her definitions here. I want to stick to the meat of what she says in this response because she's getting to <laughs> one of her quotes that made waves here, uh, dark psychic forces. What does that mean? Let's, let's listen to that. And the entire conversation that we're having here tonight, if you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, Dark psychic forces. What does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything. She's just making up terms that sound like something. Collectivized hatred. She's accusing Trump supporters of hatred and bigotry and racism. Based on what? Based on Flint, Michigan? Uh, Trump had nothing to do with that, for one. And for two, Trump has offered his help for Flint, Michigan. So what is actually she accusing them of racism for? She's not defining it. Again, she's crying wolf again, and she's making a serious accusation against Trump and against Trump supporters of hatred. She's accusing Trump supporters of hatred, which I am one, and I'd, I'm not involved in hatred or bigotry or racism in any way, and, there's, and she's brought forth no evidence pointing to the Flint water crisis in 2014 when Trump wasn't even president. That's the only evidence she has in this comment. That's not evidence of Trump being racist. It's so ridiculous. That's not evidence of collectivized hatred. I don't want the people in Flint to have bad water. I don't want the government involved at all because they screw it up. But unfortunately, the, until somebody comes up with a better system with maybe private companies can compete somehow, and if you have an idea, please post it in the comments, but until that happens, I mean, government incompetence is government incompetence. So this dark psychic force seems to be her imagination of Trump's motives and Trump's supporters' motives of racism. I'm sorry, you gotta back it up. You make a serious charge like that, you gotta back it up. She didn't back it up.
But let me take a let me take a wild guess of what she means. She's not going to respond to me and say, "Well, this is what I mean." So let me let me guess what she probably means by that. She probably means the situation at the border, because I can't think of any way Trump has been racist towards African American people, even the appearance. Calling out Baltimore, which is predominantly black, that's not racist. To call out the terrible job Elijah Cummings and the leadership in Baltimore have done for the people of Baltimore. She's calling out the terrible job the Flint, the people in charge of the Flint water supply have done, which has hurt black people. That's the same thing Donald Trump is doing. He's calling out the terrible job the, the leaders of Baltimore have done that have hurt black people. So you're doing the same thing he's doing. That's not racist to do that. I'm, I'm fine with you doing that. That's good. We should call that out. That's terrible. Government should be providing clean water, and they didn't in that case. So that's legitimate to point out, and we should fix that. But we should also fix a rat problem. That's also a problem, but, but Donald Trump gets falsely called racist for doing that. Okay, so that, that might be one thing she means. So, so Flint water crisis is out. Trump wasn't even president at the time. Trump has offered help for Flint, Michigan. The Baltimore situation is out because he's doing the exact same thing she's doing. He's calling out a situation, a bad situation that hurts black people. What, so I don't see any in any way Trump even could be construed as being racist against black people. So I would assume what, what she means is the border situation. And I would first say, well, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Bernie Sanders all have made comments about securing the border and that we should stop people from coming here illegally. And Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi in their press conference a few months ago, they said multiple times they want the border secured. And Barack Obama deported more people than anybody. So how come none of that is racist? Well, it's a very convenient racism. It's, it's not racism when they did it. It's not racism when Trump's doing it. It's not racism, period. It's another cry wolf attempt to smear Trump as racist. That's not a legitimate argument. That's just name calling. And she talks about how she's going to beat him with love. That doesn't seem very loving to call half the country racist based on nothing. That's just mudslinging. That's not love, Marianne Williamson. I immediately think this is not a critical thinker. This is somebody who is just falling into the media's narratives. So I can't take her seriously. Uh, some of the comments she, she made in the debates I thought were good and insightful. And she does bring something unique to the table in certain ways. And I actually think she could, you know, have some kind of a role in the Trump administration, to be honest, because she, she is an innovator and thinks outside the box in a lot of ways. And I, I think that's great. But some of these comments about racism, man, and, and the, um, the naked mudslinging with no evidence... And the, the one piece of evidence she did bring up, Flint water crisis had nothing to do with racism, nothing to do with Trump. To me, that's just somebody who's like a sheep, who's like an NPC. If you, have, if you wear a Make America Great Again hat, then you can be attacked. I mean, is that love, Marianne Williamson? You say you're going to beat Trump with love, but you're on a side that's doing those things. I haven't seen you called out. Instead, you falsely accuse Trump supporters of racism. And it's got so bad, even to the point that a McDonald's worker refused to serve a paramedic. And it, you, you get to that point, and a McDonald's worker got fired for it, but you get to that point where the left is demonizing police so much for racism, which the statistics don't bear it out, that cops are on the hunt for black people. And, and the media is playing up these narratives of racism so much that you had a McDonald's worker see somebody in uniform, wasn't even a police person, and refuse to serve them as some kind of a quote-unquote resistance, I guess. I mean, this is a, a person who saves people's lives for a minimum wage. Paramedics make very little. They're saving people's lives, and some random person that working at McDonald's thinks, thinks they're doing a noble thing by refusing a principled thing by refusing to serve them. This is how warped the mentality has gotten from the left wing media into the people. It is really a destructive, it is collectivized hatred. And the people doing it think they're doing something good. And, and she's not standing against it. She's perpetuating it with this, these um, 
crying wolf on racism against uh, Trump and Trump supporters. 